Assalamu alaikum, I pray all of you are well. We spoke last time about the main issues concerning Christians and Muslims, the things that we believe uh, and the things that we know each other believes. Uh, Muslims know that Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God, part of the Trinity. Uh, Muslims know that Christians believe Jesus Christ was crucified. Muslims don't believe that, but we believe we know that Christians believe that. Muslims tend to know that Christians believe in uh, Jesus Christ being part of a trinity. Muslims don't believe that, but they know that Christians believe that. And we spoke about these kind of uh, differences between us. And then we spoke about the, the, the kind of origin, genesis of these differences emanates and stems really from a, a key event. The event de described in the book of Genesis called the fall, when Adam and his wife ate from a tree tempted by the devil in the form of a snake or a serpent, and then they're condemned. And Christian hamartologists argue there's kind of three types of damnation there for Adam and his wife, a physical damnation, spiritual damnation, and an eternal damnation. We spoke about the contrast, the way this is uh, contrasted with the Quranic account of that same incident, uh, and whether Allah instead shows forgiveness and mercy and love towards his creation servant Adam. We spoke about these differences. There's one thing Christians usually say to Muslims, uh, even concerning this incident, and that is, what about justice? What about the justice of God? They say, we understand God being forgiving and merciful and loving, but you have to explain to us what then, where then is the justice of God if God should therefore punish sins. And they rely on a verse in the Bible, the wages of sin is death. So Adam being forgiven is wonderful, but where then is the justice of God? Now, a few things for us to clarify at the outset. Number one, Muslims do believe that God is the most just as well. We do, <coughs> sorry, we do believe in the day of judgment. We believe that all creation will be before God on that day and God will judge his creation. We believe that as well. At least three times in the Quran we have this that Allah says Allah that Allah doesn't show the least injustice to any of his creation. Allah is the most just to all of them. So we believe that. We believe that God is just. But think about this. If we have if we, if we have God's forgiveness and God's justice, what does forgiveness actually mean then? The whole point is, is that Allah, God is able to show punishment, but chooses forgiveness instead is a true reflection of his forgiveness and his love and his mercy. I mean, how else would you have it then? If God could not punish, but chose to be merciful, then what would mercy even mean? Because he, he's unable to punish. But if God is able to punish and able to show a mercy, but chooses mercy instead of punishment, that's truly a reflection of his mercy and his love and his kindness. It's like an example. Imagine if I said to my son that, you know, you need to, if you pass all of your exams, then in the summer holidays, you can play computer games all throughout the holidays, but you have to pass all of your exams first, all of them, straight A's in all of your exams. But let's say he studies, studies hard, revises, and gets all straight A's, but gets a one B with those straight A's. Now, if I choose, let's say, okay, let's say if he, let's say he does, he, he passes all of his exams straight A's, and I still then, but I then refuse to allow him to play computer games, that's a reflection of my injustice, because I promised him something, but I'm being unjust by, by, by ref, re, re, refusing him to play the computer games in spite of his full A's. But let's say if he gets all A's and one B, now, I could choose at that point, I could choose to say, well, I, I did tell you that if you had to get full A's to play the computer games, but you didn't, therefore I could say you'd be punished for that. Or I could choose uh, to forgive him instead. I could choose, in fact, to show mercy and say, you know what? You worked really hard and you're nearly all there. And so you can spend the whole some holidays in computer games. If I give that instead as a reflection of my mercy, God, therefore, has the power to forgive and have the power to show mercy. And in this Adamic paradigm, Allah chooses to show mercy to his servants as a reflection of who he truly is. 
beautifully reflected in fact, in fact in Islam if a person intends to do good and then does the good he gets two rewards one for the intention of do of intending the good and number two for doing the good but if he intends to do wrong uh, and then does the wrong he gets one punishment for doing the wrong not the not the not the uh, punishment for intending the wrong it's just simply another reflection of that divine grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, always remember, whenever Christians ask a question about what about the justice of God, it's kind of a nonsensical question because it means that you're dealing with, it's as if you're, you're thinking of two entities, you're not. It's one entity called God himself. And he, out of his divine knowledge and wisdom and all goodness, chooses to show mercy when he, when he wants to to his servant as a reflection simply of his love and his mercy and his grace. And of course, all of us will face that day of the day of judgment. And there is a thing called recompense. That even if somebody has wronged somebody else, but Allah chooses to forgive that person, doesn't mean that person's, the wrongdoing inflicted on the person is gone unchecked. It means there is a recompense for that. And the recompense is far greater that any injury, uh, affliction inflicted upon a person. We also believe that to be a case reflected on the Day of Judgment as well. So much so that a person who will be in, who will have a hard life of difficulty and Allah will ask him on the Day of Judgment, who will be in heaven then, uh, did you have any difficulty in your life? And he had the most hard life, the hardest life. And he will say, oh Allah, I didn't even have anything difficult in my life because you will, because you will forget the difficulty when he sees and enjoys the pleasure of paradise. And conversely, the one who had the easiest life of depravity and evil, and he will be in hell and Allah will ask him, did you have a, dip, a, a good day in your life? And he will say, I never had any good day in my life. Because once he encounters the punishment, he will forget all the good in this life. So we're speaking about different reality and realm altogether. Therefore, the beautiful thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving and the most merciful and the most just as well.